Hello everyone! In this short video I am going to show you how to knit a balaclava that became trendy this winter. I knitted it using a rib because this way it sits tighter and better. Unfortunately 100 gram of yarn wasn't enough and I couldn't find more of this color right away, therefore I finished it here using another color, but as soon as I find it I will redo the top. For this project you can use any yarn you like because I'm going to show how to calculate stitches and use any gauge you reached with your yarn. I used slightly more than 100 gram yarn of Infinity Design Tundra. It recommends using 8 mm needles, but I used 4.5 mm needles as I like to get my balaclava with the tighter stitches. You need any circle of needles 40 cm that are suitable for your yarn and if you need double pointed needles for the very top of the balaclava. This balaclava I knit bottom up, doing some increases in the back, then making an opening in the middle and decreasing evenly the top. To make calculations you need to know how many stitches you have in 10 cm of your circle knitting. You can also check the approximate gauge on the label of the yarn, but of course it can guarantee you that you reach the same amount of stitches in your 10 cm. Therefore I recommend making your own swatch and count stitches. In my case I have 14 stitches in 10 cm. The yarn is pretty chunky and it must be really warm as it is 100% wool. So in 1 cm I get 1.4 stitches. For this balaclava I calculate 52 cm of head circumference because I wanted to sit a bit tighter. It is actually 3 cm less than my actual head circumference. If you don't want it to sit so tight on your head, measure your head circumference and take this number or more if you want it to have a bit looser. So you can customize the size. I multiply 52 on 1.4 stitches and get 72.8. As I need an even number, I take 72 stitches. Moreover, the number has to be dividable by 4. Make sure it works with your number of stitches, so after doing calculations use the closest number that is dividable by 4. As a casting on method I use Bulgarian cast on. I have a separate video if you are wondering what is a Bulgarian cast on. Here just say that this method lets you get a very stretchy edge. You can see here how stretchy it is. I cast on 72 stitches for my balaclava. As soon as all stitches on my needles, I start working on one knit, one purl rib. I keep on knitting the rib for about 8-12 cm. It depends on how long you want the neck part to be. After 8-12 cm I want to do some increases on the back to make balaclava more anatomic friendly. First of all I set markers on both sides from the beginning of the row. I want to have them, uh, let's say, 3 cm, so I convert the number into stitches. 3 cm multiply 1.4 is roughly 5 stitches. I set markers 5 stitches to the left and 5 stitches to the right. The 
first increase I do right after the first stitch. First of all, I check what kind of stitch is following. Now I see it is a purl stitch. Therefore, I make a twisted knit stitch from the stretch in between markers. Then I keep doing the rip until I reach the next increase marker. Here I also check what kind of stitch I have. Here it is a knit stitch. Therefore I pick up the stretch in between markers and make a twisted purl stitch. The first row with increases has been done. Now and every second row I just repeat the pattern without any changes. Therefore in the next row I don't do any increases. Next row I do increases again. After the marker I see the knit stitch and therefore do a twisted purl stitch from the stretch in between stitches. After I do one knit, one purl stitch until I reach the next marker. Here the last stitch is a purl stitch, which means that I pick up the stretch in between markers and do a twisted knit stitch from it. The second row with increases has been done and I want to make four all together. You can also do four increasing rows if you have similar yarn, six or eight if you have thinner yarn or you want to have a deeper curve for the head. Don't forget that every second row is without changes. That's how I look the part with increases. It follows the curve of the head. When I've done all increases I keep knitting the rib for about five centimeters.
it's time to make an opening. For my gauge 14 stitches and 10 centimeters, I need to cast off 29 stitches. Basically, I count 20 centimeters converted into stitches. For me, it would be 28 stitches, but I need to get an uneven number. Therefore, I take 29 stitches. The rest of the stitches I divide into 2. 80 minus 29 equals 51. So I get one part 25 stitches, another 26 stitches. I set markers from the beginning of the row, counting 25 stitches of one side and 26 stitches of another side. The main point here that I finish here right after the knit stitch. So knit stitch will be the edge of my opening. When markers are set, I start knitting the row until I reach the first marker. Here's my first marker. I start casting off right after the marker. First I do the purl stitch. The next stitch is a knit stitch. So I do a knit stitch and move the previous purl stitch over it. The first stitch of the cast off is ready. The next stitch is a purl stitch. I do a purl stitch and move the previous one stitch over it. Again, do a knit stitch and the previous one over. Do a purl stitch and a stitch over it. I keep doing this way trying to not tighten the stitches too much, I do it until the marker. By the marker I've done 28 stitches, I still missing one. Here take off the marker and use the next stitch to finish cast off. After a cast off stitches I want to keep working the row. So it will be stocking and knitting now for the next two rows. I do repeat the pattern not only until the end of the row but until the opening of another side. I do again rib pattern. The last stitch, however, I need to knit as a knit stitch and then turning the knitting. Also turn the stitch so it's not twisted. I do the second row now until I reach the end of the row. I've done two extra rows and now I do another row and then will cast on necessary stitches to form the upper side of the opening. I've reached the other side and want to cast on stitches. The number of stitches has to be not only the same as before, but also dividable by 8. So if you have a smaller number while casting on, you add a necessary number of stitches. To cast on, I add on my needles loops like this, which are actually just twisted thread. I add 29 stitches. They also have to be pretty tight.
then I join the other side. I keep knitting until the edge of the opening. The next round, when I reach the stitches I cast on, I have to make them according to the pattern. So the first stitch will be a purl stitch, then knit stitch, then purl stitch, and so on until the end of the opening. As you see, even if I cast on tightly, there is still some loose thread that gives me a stretchy edge. Next 10 cm I want to repeat my pattern without any changes. The final stage of the balaclava. Here I want to divide all stitches into 4 parts separated by one knit stitch. Here I do some calculations again. I subtract from the total number 80 stitches, 4 stitches that I use as a dividers and I get 76 stitches. I divide 76 stitches into 4 and get 19. So I have 19 stitches for each part. The first marker I want to set in front. There is not really a knit stitch that is in the middle, therefore I take the knit stitch closest to the center and start setting markers from it. I mark every knit stitch that divides the top into 4 parts, 19 stitches in between each of them. Let me do the first decrease round. All decreases I want to do from the knit stitch. You see, in this round I do it towards the central knit stitch. Therefore I do it left to right from knit to purl stitch and uh, make a knit stitch. Then I follow the pattern until I have two stitches left until the marker. Here I have knit purl stitches and I do it again from uh, knit to purl stitch right to left. Therefore need to turn both loops to make them convenient to knit together like a knit stitch. Then uh, there is a marker, central knit stitch marker and do decrease again from knit to purl stitch or left to right. Follow the pattern until I have two stitches left until the next marker. I do decrease this way until the end of the row.
The next row is every second row. I just follow the stitches without any changes. Now I have the next decreasing row and here you will see a bit of difference. Now the first decrease I have uh, is uh, knit and pro stitches. The rule here is that um, first row I do decreases towards the center marker, another row decreases away from the center marker. Here I do decrease from knit to pro stitch, therefore right to left and get a knit stitch. I turn the loops here if necessary. Next stitches I just follow the pattern until two stitches are left. Here I also need to make knit stitches out of two following the rule away from the central knit stitch, therefore left to right or knit to purl stitch. I keep on decreasing this way until the end of the round. All next rounds with decreases I do the same. One round with decreases towards the central knit stitch, next round away from the central knit stitch. It is important to follow this rule because in some rows you will get two knit stitches to decrease instead of combination knit purl stitches. I also remember to have every second row without changes. The last round with decreases will leave me either 3 or 2 stitches in between markers. I had the last decreases done and now ready to bind off the stitches. I actually just want to cut the thread leaving for about 10 cm. Then I use this loose end and pull it through each stitch. Tighten the thread up. I see it is still a bit loose. Therefore, I take crochet and pull the thread to the wrong side. Finally, I pull the thread once more through all the stitches. After, I weave the end to hide it and cut it. My balaclava is ready to wear. I hope this video was useful for you and you find it helpful for your balaclava project. In this case, send a like to the video and subscribe to the channel to get even more video tutorials. Thank you for watching and see you soon!